Jenna. I'm the park naturalist here at Bear Branch Nature Center and Hashua Environmental Center. And we are here in front of our aviary today to give you a little spiel about some of our awesome birds that we have here. Now we have all of these birds under multiple different permits through DNR and US Fish and Wildlife and the USDA. Uh, and they are all living with us because they cannot be returned back into the wild for multiple reasons. Uh, some of them have injuries from either flying into glass, getting hit by cars. Others are imprints, meaning that they were raised by people. And so all of these guys cannot be returned back into the wild. And instead we use them to be our amazing animal ambassadors for their species, teach people up close about how cool these birds are and what people at home can do to make sure that we don't get any more birds into our aviary here. So our little screech owl here, he's with us because he uh, flew into a window and he broke his wing. He still has both of his wings, uh, but it just didn't heal right enough for him to fully fly. Something that you can actually do uh, to help not just him, but all birds. Birds can't see glass. And so what they see is either through the window, especially if you have another window kind of behind it. And so they're like, oh, I can just go through it. Or they see the reflection and they think that it's just a continuation. And so there's a whole bunch of things that you can put on your glass. Uh, they make feather friendly, bird safe glass. Um, it's little tiny dots. There are decal stickers. There's all sorts of things that you can put on your windows that basically break up that reflection and that glare. And they can see, oh, there's something there. I can't fly through it. Other simpler, cheaper options is literally taking some uh, yarn and just dangling some yarn down from your windows. If you have a cardinal blue jay, bluebird, that is constantly hitting a window, like going at the window, going after the mirror on your car. It's because it's a male and it thinks, oh, this is another male. I need to defend my territory. I get calls all the time of people that are like, there's so much poop all over my window, all over my car, like it's destroying everything. I'm like, cover it, cover it. If you have a car, either getting a car cover or specifically taking um, bags and just bagging your, your rear view mirrors um, or on your house, covering it with cardboard, something to prevent that glare. Uh, you're going to save yourself so much headache and also the bird a lot of literal headache. Now I know it's daytime and he's awake and alert and that's basically just because we woke him up. Um, owls, even though they are nocturnal, it's not a like a light switch like it is with with diurnal birds, with hawks, with eagles, as soon as the sun goes down, they're like, night, night time. And they will find a roost and they'll sit there. Owls, a little bit more opportunistic, especially during um, breeding season when they have babies to feed, they will sometimes hunt during the day um, or early evening. Uh, a lot of owls are more crepuscular uh, instead of nocturnal. Crepuscular means active during dawn and dusk. Uh, and so that's a lot of times when these guys are, are gonna come out and eat their food and all that good stuff. Now these guys are also cavity nesters. You can build screech owl boxes uh, to hang on your property uh, in order to attract more of these guys as well. When you think of a screech owl, uh, you may have heard one in your backyard. Most likely the owl, if you've heard a hoot owl, it's probably a barred owl. Uh, barred owls say, who cooks for you, who cooks for you all. <laughs> Great horned owls also hoot. They say, who's awake me too. Hoo, 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 hoo. Screech owls actually don't screech. Uh, they instead sound like a horse whinnying. So they go, <laughs> or in, in his case, sometimes he'll do a little purring noise. Uh, so that's what he did when you came up to take a picture. He did that purring noise. Basically, that's just a, hey, back off. You're in my space. <laughs> Owls are super cool because their hearing is excellent. Their eyesight is excellent, especially for a small owl like this, which again, full grown screech owl. They are a very small bird, um, especially him being a boy. He is even smaller than a female would be. These guys, larger birds like to eat them. And so not only do they have to listen in front of them to find their food, but they also have to be paying attention to what's happening behind them so that nothing comes up and can grab them. So their ears, they actually kind of have one that's a little tilted forward and one that's a little tilted backwards. And so that way they can hear 360 all the way around them. Besides them hearing 360, everybody says, oh, they can turn their heads all the way around. 
not true. Uh, they do have bones in their neck. So if they turn their head 360, their head would pop off. Uh, instead, they can do 270 degrees, so three quarters of the way around, and they can do it both ways. So when they do it really fast and then they spin the other way, it looks like their head is spinning. And that's where that myth kind of came from. Owls have these things on the top. Those are not ears. Uh, they are just tufts of feathers. They use those for communication. Um, so right now he's kind of alert, seeing what's going on. If he's really angry or scared, they'll pin themselves back. If he's super interested in something, they'll go way forward. If he's kind of relax they'll kind of sit half mast um, his ears are actually along these dark lines um, on the side of his head same way as ours are and if you have long hair or in his case feathers it covers your ears the biggest thing about uh, your your boxes and stuff too is placement um, so making sure that they're placed in a good habitat where most likely there are at least maybe some already around um, and then also making sure that they're high enough up off the ground so that they feel protected, all of that good stuff. With the Kestrel boxes, those actually, I don't know how you're doing yours, but typically they go in either along an edge of a field or in an open field area, and they're on a big pole. Um, I think the pole is like 15, 20 feet high. We had one person take the guideline that is making the box up top sturdy, and then two people on the pole itself. because so the pole would lever down like this, and the nest box would stay upright. So like the whole time that the thing is coming down, the person with the guideline was making sure that the nest box would remain upright um, so that, you know, eggs don't go sloshing back and forth when you go like this. But he is a red morph, um, so he's super, super pretty uh, with that coloration. Uh, they come in this color and then the grayer color. Um, nothing to do with uh, genetics to a degree. Scientists aren't actually sure why some are red and why some are gray. There are more gray morph coloration on the east coast. On the west coast there's more red morph coloration. If you think about it, on the east coast our trees are more of a gray brown color, whereas west coast there are more redwoods, so it's more of that kind of redder-ish bark. So yeah, I don't know if that's why, but uh, it is cool to see their different their different coloration. And of course, even this reddish color, them sitting up in a little crevice of a tree, they blend right in. Especially the gray ones when they close their eyes and just sit there, they look just like a stick coming off of a tree. They have excellent camouflage.